In the meanwhile, Canada is one of the few countries to have ruled itself out of the extension of the Kyoto Protocol. However, the country says that there is more than one way to lead, pointing to its financial pledges as an example. And CTV's James Chow spoke to Canadian Chief Negotiator Dan McDougall over in Doha. Thank you very much for your time today. Canada has been roundly criticized for refusing flat out to be a part of a second commitment period uh, for the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, how does it feel when people say that you're out of step, you're out of touch with the rest of the world? Um, actually, we don't quite view it that way. Um, for us, Kyoto was not, a, uh, was not a treaty that marked the way for the future. It was an ineffective treaty in very many ways, and that's why we have, we have lost that treaty. We're, we're pleased now that the progress that we are seeing here as parties come together and look towards a new treaty that better marks the way of the future. We're dealing with a global problem. We need global solutions. The key element of the new treaty is that it's going to be applicable to all parties. Your Environment Minister Peter Kent is on his way to Doha, but he's already said that he's not prepared to pledge new money to an international climate fund. Quite simply, what is Canada prepared to move on? The amounts that have been offered here are in excess, in fact, of what was pledged. $33 billion thus far has been raised and delivered over those three years. Canada was a major part of that. We have delivered $1.2 billion we've committed for that three-year period. At the moment, we're focusing on that last element of that. We still have $200 million of that funding, significant amount, that we're going to deliver by the end of our fiscal year this year as well. Clearly you feel that there is more than one way to lead. Uh, give us one of those ideas. We've taken a very serious commitment under the Copenhagen Accord of an absolute reduction in emissions at home of minus 17% by 2020. And we are taking strong action in order to deliver on that. And we're doing that all domestically. We're doing that through very stringent regulations. We started with the most, uh, the sectors that had the highest emissions the transportation sector. We've had a series of regulatory measures that we've put in place in order to uh, reduce emissions there that are going to see concrete reductions in the near term and the long term. Canada is one of the world's energy powers, some would say because of its exploitation of Alberta tar sands. You find yourself in a scenario like many other countries. How do you balance the right to develop for your people with the commitment to cut down on CO2 emissions? Right. Clearly, um, the focus of the government in Canada has been very much on um, ensuring that the economy continues to prosper and grow. We've been very successful in Canada in the economic growth that we have seen. Part of that, indeed, comes from our exploitation of natural resources. We've adopted many strong legislative measures and regulatory measures to, show, to ensure that those resources are developed very responsibly. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much for having us.